never give in. Never, never, never. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome along this afternoon to the Stratton Parish uh, Her Majesty's representative, the Lord Lieutenant of Dorset, Mr. Angus Campbell, General Tony Jeeps, and the Reverend Dr. John Travell, distinguished guests, lords, ladies, and gentlemen, family members, and close relatives, as well as representatives from the Royal British Legion and members of the public. Welcome to you all. This organisation, I believe, was the one of the answers, as it were. They were the spirit of resistance. Hitler and his Nazis had conquered virtually all of Europe that he wanted to conquer. And there was one nation standing in his way, and that was us. Our army in this country was in a very bad state, and had the Germans actually landed, would they have been able to do very much? One wonders. But Hitler knew that he couldn't send those invasion badges, badges across while the Royal Navy was in existence. You'd have to defeat the Royal Navy. He couldn't defeat the Royal Navy while the RAF was in existence. Hence the, the Battle of Britain, the aim being to destroy the RAF. But now it's against that background that you've got to understand how the auxiliars started. Who uh, better to uh, recruit into the auxiliars as countrymen, uh, gamekeepers, gamekeeper's assistants, gamekeeper's son, um, uh, who are used to shooting, used to crawling around, used to killing, and so to my mind, these auxiliars were the very spirit of resistance that Churchill was trying to build up, uh, and they deserve our, uh, our tribute for that. And I'm now going to introduce a real chap who was there, Jack Northover, one of the last of the three I joined the Rackerford Patrol in 1942 when I was 15 and took the place of my brother George who left the RAF and I served with my father George Senior and the others from the village. At 15 at the time it seemed a great adventure. You only re realized years later how important things were and what it was all about. Thank you. Thankful the unit would never have to be put to use, but we were ready to do so if it had been necessary. I, I am pleased what was done is now being recognised and that this event is on behalf of those who served in the Rockford Patrol. This is dedicated to the seven others who served with me. I am pretty to be able to stand here today to accept it on their behalf for what they did and what they were prepared to do. I am truly honored that it be remembered in this way. I am very grateful and honored that the both Lieutenant Lord Lieutenant and Major General Jeeps, our intendants to acknowledge that what part the units were prepared to pay, play in the war effort. Can I thank Stratton Parish Council for the part they have played in this particular, and in particular, David Dighton and his cousin Heather for making the arrangements for today event and make it successful as it's been. The effort of those involved in today is much appreciated. 
I thank you all for coming. Well done, Jack. Fantastic. It's amazing to have someone who took part. Uh, very young, of course, 15, but clearly took over from his brother, who was sadly killed in the war. And we mustn't forget that a lot of people went on from these units and from the Home Guard, the younger ones, to serve. And, uh, and George, Jack's brother, paid the ultimate price as a rear gunner in a, in a, in a bomber. Now, the thing that I think is amazing about this is that someone, or people, a number of people, have taken the trouble to research this. They actually know where the headquarters was the fact that people took um, the Secrets Act seriously, as they should, 50-year Official Secrets Act, meant that an awful lot of these places, the, the hideaways, etc., have been lost. And you know, the people mainly involved were either in reserved occupations or considerably older. So it's only because we have young people like Jack, I call you young Jack, because you were when you, when, when you joined, uh, that, we, that we have the history, and I think it's absolutely fantastic from a community's point of view that that was found out and that they've taken the trouble to make the memorial. And one has to think of all the other memorials that could be made around the country, and perhaps uh, you'll uh, beat a path in order that direction. But my uh, real honour is to represent Her Majesty the Queen in unveiling this fantastic memorial to the community and to those people who took part, and I would like to think to a lot of people who will not have memorials elsewhere who did exactly the same thing. So uh, rather than keep you soaking, I'd better go and do that. I now officially unveil this memorial. There we go. We thank you with all our hearts for the way this country was defended at great cost and sacrifice and preserved from suffering the evils of occupation endured by so many millions of people in other lands. We dedicate this memorial stone to honour and preserve the memory of those from this village and neighbourhood who served in the Rackleford Auxiliary Unit during the Second World War, when this country was in imminent threat of invasion and occupation by the forces of Nazi Germany, and who were prepared to give their lives to defend this nation and its people from enslavement and tyranny. And to those from this village, who enlisted in the other services of the Crown and who died in the cause of freedom. The last real secret of World War II have recently been disclosed. It is about seven men from Rackleford and here be the names of those. Jack and Horace Northover and Percy Foss, Lewis Downton and William Steer, John Hounslow and Harry Atkins, such brave men who showed no fear. They were part of Churchill's secret army, supposedly in the Home Guards patrol, but really training in guerrilla warfare, had to pledge not to tell a soul. The auxiliary unit was established because they Germans were really trying to invade Old England with an operation be the code name of Sea Lion. They were armed with Colt 45s, which had been confiscated by America. And in a copse near the Maester's house was their secret bunker in the rookery. They had to sign the official secret act and were loyal to the bow and each other. It was just two years ago that Jack did show where they did go under cover. Of course, all of them were a crack shot and had in-depth knowledge of the land. They weren't afeared by what they heard to take the job in hand. Specially trained for the dangerous task to protect their king and country, they men were willing to go a-killing 
To lose their lives, we know self-pity. Cos if the Germans had invaded, they all had to reach for their gun to assassinate local officials, stop them collaborating with the Hun. Four years they carried the secret, and when war ended, they didn't tell. No glory or recognition for them, just a small badge for their lapel. Well, Ado Lewis Downton passed away, Binding his badge were a vital clue. Interviews and research followed, and that's how we mirror today you. When word got out of what was about, folk wanted to honour the seven, be getting a strong memorial erected to ensure we'll never forget them. In England's darkest moments, it seemed almost inevitable that the Nazis would set foot on this soil. The men who made up the auxiliary units knew what they would be called up to do. As the last ditch line of defence during World War II, these units were the very essence of loyalty, patriotism and courage. It is therefore no surprise to those here today that we are honouring our own, the Rappleford unit. Brave, loyal, patriotic. But they were also something else. They were men of the land, with a deep and knowledgeable commitment to the land that they were defending. As a child growing up in Stratton, I was immensely privileged to have known some of them and their families. They had a strong bond with my family, encompassing five generations and forming seminal parts of our lives. Today we remember them with fondness, respect and friendship. They and their families worked on the farms within the parish. George Northover was the gamekeeper at Rackleford, followed by Percy Faust. Harry Atkins worked at Higher Rackleford. William Steer was farm foreman during the war. And Lewis Downton worked on the Rackleford farm his entire life, man and boy. My great-grandfather, grandfather, uncle, cousins and father benefited so much from their wisdom, astute agricultural expertise and loyalty. And they brought to all of us across those generations their deep and enduring love of this Dorset land. I used to ride my bike through the village to the constantly busy Stratton farmyard. There was always a cup of very sweet tea from Lewis and Mabel, or a wise piece of advice about where to pick the best blackberries. Their home was always welcoming. Mr. Downton used to say to us, keep your mouth shut and your ears and eyes open. A wise man indeed, especially to rather annoying and inquiring children. <laughs> Percy Faust knew every ditch, every hole in the hedge, every rabbit warren, as well as the best place to build camps. He encouraged us all as children to explore the woods to walk the fields and to study the hedgerows. He and Chrissy often looked after us, accompanied by a packet of his favourite ham sandwiches. And Percy was a natural teacher. He taught generations to drive a Land Rover, to fish the River Froom and to snare rabbits on the farm. These amazing men were part of our large family. We were all so proud when they were awarded long service medals from the Royal Agricultural Society and Country Landowners Association, respectively. Today, we honour the Rappleford Auxiliary Unit and we thank them. It has been a privilege for generations of the Pope family to know these extraordinary, brave and loyal Dorset men. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn, at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. <laughs>
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. I say just a thank you to everybody for supporting us today and uh, endorsing our efforts. We much appreciate it.